Everyone's missed you, Chewbacca, because you don't come down the basement. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the start of this video, which I'm not actually going to do anything but explain, and then we're going to move on to the next 40 nine minutes i don't know that's my guess for the entire length of this video so this video is sponsored by Deconi. Deconi, the makers of pads and other things that have to do with headphones um wants me to try every one of their bare dynamic pads these are eight varieties of pads on all the bare dynamics i had and then they let they loaned me three more bare dynamics so i have got the dt770 pro 80 ohm the DT1990 Pro, the Bare Dynamic T1s, these are not the new ones with the new tuning. So this is the original ones that I've heard. And then these are the Bare Dynamics I own, the uh, Tiger 300Rs, the MMX 300s, 300Rs, MMX 300, and then the DT880 600 ohm. Look at her in the sun, she looks so pretty. And uh, powering this colossal mess, is my uh, Tascam MH8 for five out of six, and then just the 880s need a separate, more powerful amplifier. So I have the DeArt Aquila 2, literally just for those. Th that's it. And the way this is all hooked up is I have, this is acting as a DAC for this. Um, this SMSL M400 is acting as a DAC for the Tascam. We have the Pi 2 Design uh, Audio Hat uh, Wi-Fi thingy that is receiving Wi-Fi music from the computer located on the back of that television. That's a beautiful 65 inch Sony. Should I review that television? It's really nice. I picked, I went to Sony because it was $20 more than the Samsung. Anyway, that is using Ropey XL, Ropey XL to communicate to this Pi, which is then outputting, get this, AES to this, which is a, the XLR format that I usually say nothing has that. And then to this, i2s which is the hdmi cable basically so the absolute best case scenario for source at least up there and while the mh8 is not exactly like the top of the line audiophile amp it should be plenty good to run most of these to like 99 percent of what they're capable of so what i'm going to do between this cut on this video and when I come back is I'm going to get a piece of paper and I'm going to fill out exactly what I think about, um, I'm going to say the stock pads on all of these. However, my MMX is already are using Dakoni. Uh, if you don't know, these are the closed backs and I have the Dakoni Choice leather on there. I may put the ones from the Tigers on there because I'm pretty sure they were the same ones. So I'll give those a, a run back with their original pads. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to go through. And here's what I have. If I can just run through these. Elite Hybrid, Elite SS, which is, uh, what's that stuff, Chewbacca? The, the thing that's made out of sheepskin. Sheepskin, um, fenestrated sheepskin, which is the pads with the holes in it. Then I've got Elite Velour. Uh, now I have over here, oh, these are the two other, these are the two cheaper sets that they have. So we've got the, the cloth one. I have the names of these somewhere. The jerseys and these, what the hell are these called? I'll get the names. The choice suede and then the choice leather. With the choice leathers are the ones that I have on this. So what I've, <laughs> they're not paying me enough for this, but I have six headphones with stock pads that I have to get an, an image of. And then each one of these headphones is going to try every single one of these pads. And if it makes it sound better, I'll tell you. If it makes it sound worse, I'll tell you. If it enhances something, I'll tell you. If it makes something sound absolutely godlike, I'll tell you. Now, I didn't actually have all these pads when I did like my swap for the MMX, so maybe I will find a better pad than the ones I have on there. And we're, we're just gonna go around the round table here, literally the round table, which, by the way, you like how I have the wires going into the split so that they all come out under the table? And it's like, it's a little bit neater. It's kind of cool, I like it. Um, but this is a normal Z review, other than the Echo, which is why I don't film up here. Let's talk about these headphones now. Okay, where are we? Pausing that. DT770 80 ohm. I started with these. You can see my piece of paper is very blank except for this chunk. And uh, the way I'm going to do this, I've decided it's just going to be one headphone at a time. 
take 90 minutes. I don't want to spend more than 90 minutes going through all these nine for uh, 10 minutes a pad. I'll be able to figure out what it is, write it down a little bit. Here we go. So the stock pads, I didn't write anything down for stock because stock is stock. And I would go in this order and sometimes I'd have to go back to stock to remind myself of what stock sounded like because I was getting a little bit like lost. Like I was getting like better and better pads and one pad was like crap and I'm like, oh shit, go back to these. Oh, okay, no, it's not crap. This is a So uh, the order of pads here, and I'll put this order of pads in the description of the video are Midnight, which is what that is. I remember it was Midnight. Jerseys, Elite uh, Sheepskin, Elite Velour, Elite Hybrid, Elite Fenestrated, and Choice Leather, and Choice Suede. And in the column here, I marked plus plus, and then double plus, double plus, which are the ones that I'm like super recommending. And the ones that don't have any marks, you're just like, eh, good. So we should start with the Midnight ones, which are their cheap, even memory foam, I don't think, eh, if they are, they're, they're not the fastest memory foam um, or slowest memory foam. These are their cheap pleather ones. And I thought those had obviously better isolation because we're looking at the stock pads and the like bare stocks is like, oh, well, they're, they're fabric, so therefore they are open. But these are closed back headphone. So don't get confused looking at the pads and bears. These should have isolation and seal. They're, they're specifically Germanly designed. But Midnight's had better isolation, more solid base because of the isolation. They were less bright and softer. And I actually, when I first started, that was the first pair I tried this, I was like, all right, that might work. You know, you know, a little bit harsh headphones. I like a little bit of a softer headphone most of the time, especially if I'm doing long listening. Um, but I did not mark it because we have so much better stuff down the line. Um, the jerseys, which are the fabric ones that look like they're made out of like sports jerseys. I think that's why they're called the jerseys. Where um, I did a plus comfort on those. Like if, if I noticed that, wow, these are fucking comfortable. I did a plus comfort, uh, plus soundstage, plus detail, which I then un wrote under plus detail. Oh, sharp maybe. Because as you change material, as you change densities of the foam, treble sort of like it's held back until it can breathe and then it just shoots at you so yeah more detail but i was having to like lower the volume because it was like oh some things were too sharp uh definitely best ba less bass impact but more space you know bigger open more open pads these are again not an open pad these are an open pad so you, you're getting about the right things for it more sound stage more detail but too much detail too much sharpness, so I did not give those a recommendation. The Midnights were like, okay, I could see it, and these were like, mmm, sharp. And then we went to the Elite series, so the Sheepskin, plus Comfort again, because those are just, you know, <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's that's the memory foam I know from Daconi. Those things, ugh. Um, but, Sealed Pad sounded, Nasal, soft, and had meh bass. I wrote meh, M-E-H, bass. So that's, that doesn't get a recommendation that the sheepskin just does bad things. Every one of these pads, from stock to, to these eight, all sounded completely different. Don't let anyone tell you that the wire matters or the amp matters more or the DAC matters more. Fuck, even the source kind of doesn't matter more than the pads. This is, this is the final countdown. This is what makes the most difference in your headphone. Almost more than the headphone, which is kind of weird to say. But I guarantee you, I could take a, a headphone that's a seven and a headphone that's a nine, make that nine sound like shit, and make that seven sound like a nine. I could do that with a pad swap. Um, so the SS, the Sheepsons get no. Met bass, soft, nasal. Good comfort though, great comfort. So then the Elite Velours which are, well, velour, and the same memory foam. And these are like a dense, you could feel how hard that foam is. It's not that cold in here. Uh, memory foam stiffens up in the cold. So you gotta remember that when you're wearing a headphone that's memory foam, as it warms up against the side of your head, it will soften and probably compress a little more. So you gotta give it time. I should have like a little heater lamp over this so that it's all face temperature as I'm putting it on. Save me a little bit of time. 
These are getting a recommendation. The elite velours are getting a recommendation. Recommendation. Uh, up comfort, up base. And the 770s aren't exactly lacking base, but I, I put up base, then I put smooth. So they add a little bit of base impact and smooth. And then I said plus brightness, but then I wrote okay next to it. So these add a little bit of brightness to the stock pads, but it's okay. If it's not, if it's brightness, it's not okay. I'll fucking tell you. Um, and it adds soundstage. So I thought that was it. I thought I was going to find the winner right here in the velours. Better soundstage, better, uh, larger, smoother bass, more comfort, and the brightness went up. So that's like overall an improvement in in the headphone. Boom, right there, elite velours. But we still have some more to go. The ones I did after that were the elite hybrids, which are uh, leather here, suede here, and perforated on the inside. So this is like the grab bag of all the other pads. I should have put these last in the list, but I did not. I'm glad I didn't put these last in the list. Um, these also get a recommendation. These are softer and wider sounding. I wrote down like immediately when I put on, when I changed pads and put it on. First thing I notice, like the first five seconds, what's my impression of these pads is softer, wider. And then I sat down and listened and then figured out the details. It was different, you know, tons of different music. Um, these are as close to stock as you can get while also being softer and wider. Because I was like listening, is the bass more intense than stock? Is the treble and detail more intense than stock? And it's not. It's just a little bit of soundstage increase. So if you love the sound of your 770s and don't want it to change, but you want more comfort and you want a little bit more width, here you go. And these still only get a single plus because we're about to get to the uh, fenestrated, which is the ones that are perforated with holes. And it's like, well, isn't that going to be like real similar? No, I don't know what the, I don't know how it works. All right. Look, acoustics are real hard. You can't just map like where a subwoofer needs to go. You have to like do physical real life tests. So this gets a double plus these fenestrated. When I put them on, the first thing I wrote was airy and wider. And then I continued to listen. And then I got plus plus soundstage, not just plus soundstage, double plus soundstage. Just because they poke some holes in a pad. Like, Zeos, are you sure you're not just making this shit up? I'm not. I'm paid to not make this shit up. All right? I don't make a fucking penny no matter which one of these you buy. I'm, I'm already done. It's like when someone makes a soundtrack for a, a movie. They're paid up front. They got their money. Then the movie goes out and makes money. And I don't think, do they get percentage? You think, I bet you John Williams gets a percentage. That'd be fucking awesome. Um, quieter is a negative. Um, putting these on made me have to raise the amplifier up because when you get airy and wider, that means you're losing like power because it's sort of like, <sighs> so you got to crank the amp a little more. So they actually made it a little less efficient. And then I wrote the most important thing on this piece of paper. I wrote Sundara like, so if you want your 770s to sound like Sundara's sound, and I wrote that in a way that I guess I should probably uh, indicate a little less bass impact, but totally worth it for like the airiness. Like, I don't know how airy happens with basically a closed pad with some holes in it. Even these velours that are open pads, like literally breathe through them, aren't as airy as these fenestrated. So bravo on these. These get a double plus recommendation. Um, the next double plus recommendation the Choice Leather. Now, the Choice Leather I've already got on a set of clothes bears, my MMX 300s. And back when I got those, this was like the only pair of, I had like the, just this pair of uh, Dacones. And I threw them on and went, holy fuck, and then I was done. And then I reviewed those and I was like screaming. And it turns out I, I must have gotten real lucky because these are also a double plus. First words, huge, huge plus soundstage, plus isolation, plus plus comfort, double plus on comfort. Because these are, these are an artificial leather that Dakoni made. Like this isn't like just oh leather. This is like their choice leather is something they've literally like tried to engineer. And you can just see how stretchy it is. It's, it's more comfortable than real leather. It just is. It just fucking is. And then you mount it onto like giant pads. And these are a little bit thicker than like, certainly thicker than the mid pad. A little bit thicker. 
But yeah, oh my God. So these are double plus comfort. They're a plus in detail. So not like too sharp, just, just a plus in detail, that's fine. And they are quieter, just like the previous um, fenestrators because you're getting, once you get width, it sort of takes it away and you gotta like crank it a little bit more to get it back to where you were. So yeah, no, these are essentially doing the exact same thing. When I'm previewing what happens to the MMX 300s when you put these pads on them. You, you just get a huge, I wanted to write, I think I ran out of space to start writing things. I'm trying to do it in like this little tiny spot in the in the paper because I don't I can't afford more paper. Oh, by the way, thank you to Princess Pasta for letting me use her notebook. I don't have any paper. I don't write in books. So I have this really nice sparkly one and I'm, I told her I'm gonna, I'll be fine. I'll just keep this page. Uh, so yeah, oh God. So now you have the choice of either going Sundara-like, airy, wider, slightly less bass, or huge soundstage in isolation and comfort and detail. And it keeps the stock bass. I didn't write anything about the low end. So that usually means that I didn't really notice anything changing, but just changing the shape of the sound with the pads is a huge deal. And then finally, the Choice Suede, which this is actually the opposite side of the leather. When they made the Choice Leather, there's a back side and a front side to everything, to all materials. And this is what the back side looked like. I don't know, just from the process. And they went, wow, this is fucking soft. And it is, it's nice. That's the nicest micro suede you've ever felt, but it's like better than that. So I gotta give this a huge plus comfort. However, no recommendation. Softer, stuffy, boomy. That was it. It was, it was, it, it made all the sounds go, whoa, just dulled them out. It sounded like actually closer and boomy. Like it was, it did all, this is the worst of all the pads. Uh, even though it's just the opposite of the Choice Leather. The Choice Leather did probably the best right next to the Fenestrated. And these are just like meh. So that is my pad assessment of the DT770's 80 ohm. I believe these pad um, changes will probably carry over also to the 250 ohm. And obviously, if I upgraded the amplifier from the Tascam, they would be a better amp than the headphones, than the better pads. And then if you had 250 ohm, or I don't think they make a 600 ohm, but 250 ohm is a little bit tighter. So yeah, um, repeating that, I recommend double pluses on the uh, Elite Fenestrated and the Choice Leather. And then just regular pluses on the Hybrids and the Velours. Hybrids if you want to stay with a stock sound, with a little more width. So if your pad's just worn out, you don't want to change how it sounds, you get the hybrids. And the Elite Velours, more comfort, more bass, smoother. It's a, basically a smoothness addition to this. So now, um, obviously I recorded the intro two days ago. I got here, I just did 90 minutes. I got a stream today because it's Sunday. Let's see how long this video actually takes. So back to, back to music. I'm 570s. Oh, Dr. Funkenstein's playing. Okay, I'm gonna pause Captain Ron, which I've been watching on mute, so I could do this. And I'm gonna pause Dr. Funkenstein. Um, two days after the first one, I finally found the time. What time is it? Oh, it's almost 1 a.m. Great, I found the time to sit down with the DT1990s, or 1990 Pro. And, ooh, interesting things happening with the pad swap. So, uh, I know this comes with two pads, and I know there was, one was like neutral, and one was like flat, and it was like some stupid fucking naming. Um, the ones that are on here are the fenestrated ones, which are the ones with the holes in it. And uh, I'm just, it's the only ones I have, the ones that sent me, so I'm gonna just take that as law, and all these comparisons will be compared to these pads. So if you have 1990s, and you have the both pads, and you have the other ones on, this is compared to these. So, um, the cheap ones, the Midnights and the Jerseys. Midnights, here are the, these. I don't have to explain it every time you're watching this video. You just saw me explain these pads to the previous one, so I'm gonna skip that. In my head, it's been two days. So, the Midnights are intense, forward, muddy, and have a weird, noisy mid-range. No, no Midnights. Um, the Jerseys, however, the cloth ones um, have a warm vocals. They're smooth, pleasant. I wrote pleasant, an impactful bass. So that's a that's a plus. Um, the way I've been wording it now is I put a plus if I think it's 
maybe not better than stock, but certainly different and should be attributed or triable. And then double plus is if I think it's better than stock as far as like music enjoyment. Like stock is, they're 1990s. I'm not going to argue stock 1990s. Um, now the elites, uh, sheepskin, are sibilant plus detail. They do have more detail. They're very intense and uh, they have an enjoyable pain, but they're also narrow. So it's like, I didn't give them a recommendation. The siblings sort of cancel that out. But I was listening on, the, on these, even though I was given like, oh my God, these are siblings. Oh my God, these are intense. It was like one of those, like, like, oh, it's so close to me wanting to listen to it. But I knew I had like nine choices, so they don't get a recommendation. So elites, elites, no. The velours, the elite velours, these soft bastards. Literally the first thing I wrote was stock. These sound like the stock pads, but had a softness to it. So that would make sense. These are fen fenestrated, so there's perforated you know, leather, and these are just a big elite velour. And so, oh. so if you like the stock sound of the DT1990s, but you want a little bit softer pad and a little bit maybe like 10% softness adjustment, like downy, like the Snuggle Bear, Snuggles, is now hugging you also. Um, very much recommending the Elite Velour. That's only a one plus though. We got, uh, we're getting to them, all right? We're getting to it. So Elite Velour is good. Um, Elite Hybrid, which is uh, fenestrated and fabric and that. But that, and that says, that I literally wrote plus vocals because the vocal energy just, whatever the frequency ranges of the vocals I was listening to at the moment, I put them on, it was like, bam, more, more of this. Then I wrote plus intense slash smooth, which is a hard, like, I, I know what I was trying to say and it's very hard to put into like a little blurb on the piece of paper because I then wrote lovely. The hybrids are lovely. They just sound lovely on this. They're getting a one plus, a, a single plus, not a double plus, but but they're lovely. So you can have these and have the stock sound with a little more softness. These, you could have more intense vocals, yet smoother. There's something about the stock, pad, like these, these are neutral as fuck by default. So if you get smoother, yet neutral, it's, it's, I don't know how to describe that, if it's doing like a warmth thing. So yeah, um, Elite Hybrid's amazing. But not Double Star Amazing. Double Star Amazing starts with the Fenestrated, which since the stock pad uh, is Fenestrated, you, you're thinking it's gonna sound exactly the same. And you'd be fucking wrong, buddy. Because, <laughs> oh man, stock plus smoother and wider. Because they're not much thicker, but whatever it is, it's, it's gotta do with the density of the foam being used. I think there's a little bit more dense foam in the Dakoni. And and a softer, oh no, a, a softer elite leather. I don't I don't know. I don't know how the magic is. Look, you can't make this shit up. I'm sitting here. I'm getting paid to sit here and just go, huh, this pokey hold pad and this pokey hold pad sound different. So this pokey hold pad, the elite fenestrated. Stock plus smoother and wider. That's it. That's all you need to do is sound like 1990s, but smoother and wider, and you get double stars. So you fucking do double stars. Congratulations, you win. Um, which, in contrast to the other ones, which is a little bit didn't get like... Actually, they got a double star there. Um, choice leather, which is a solid leather. Deeper. Then I had to write deep vocals. Because it really, it was like a little bit of Barry White. Like everybody started getting a little Barry White on me with, with the choice leather. It was sort of trapping in a lot of that low end, low end energy and it was keeping it there. Yet, I put a plus treble. Not siblings, just plus treble. So that also gets two stars. Because, I mean, if you're trying to look for... A, this is an excellent little guide that's going to be made up. Because if you have 1990s and you want to try something different... I know for a fact changing the pads will get you like a completely different headphone. Just a completely different fucking headphone. So you want deeper, 
deep, I just wrote deeper. So whatever it, it just put it on, it was like, just the, the sound emanated from like a different area. Because usually you don't have a sealed thing. And I had, uh, here's the thing, the midnights, which are here, which are, you know, you, if I closed your eyes, you're like, well, they kind of look the same. Just, just throw the midnights away compared to those on these headphones. Deeper deep vocals plus treble. So I think I listened to those. I don't want to keep going back to, I've only done two of these six headphones so far in like two weeks. So I don't want to keep going back to the same ones, but maybe there might be just like a single, maybe one pair of these headphones, of these pads works on every bear and makes them better. We'll find out. And then finally, the choice suede, which on the 770s was um, stuffy, boomy, and softer sounds, is now on the 1990s, smooth with banging bass and wide and intense. So adding width and yet intensity, and then also being smooth, I wasn't, I was tempted to put a three star on these. But I held back because the banging bit, like, I don't know, I couldn't, I couldn't, couldn't bring myself to do it. So basically, the two that you should not get are the Elite Sheepskin and the Midnight. Those are out. But all the rest of these actually are either recommended for trying a different sound signature or straight up, I think I like the 1990s better with everything from the Fenestrated to the Choice Leather to the Choice Suede. If you're doing jobs with them, leave them towards the stock sound. So you'd want to get the Fenestrated or you'd want to get the Velours. But if you're, if you're doing like some, just, you just want to fuck around, then there you go. So, okay, that was, that was today's um, adventure. It is now officially 10 to 1 in the morning. I'll we'll cut. Let's get angsty. I won't ignore, oh shit, I can't. I guess I could just mute it. No, that's the speakers. That's not that, I gotta, I gotta. All right, all right, I got it. I got it. All right, please, I want monetization for this video. So, T1s. Now, I know there's a brand new version of T1s with completely different tuning, and uh, this is not them. This is a pair that I was sent from Dakoni. And, up to this point, the stock pads didn't get an actual like rating. But with this pair, I had to write sharp on top. I just had to, to sort of remind myself to go back to the stock pads, these, which are like the standard Baronamic, you know, velour pad. And just, just to remind myself, holy shit. This is like right near that, like, oh God, Baronamic, please stop. Please stop Baronamic. Well, then I went, I'm being distracted by, um, I have to just pause that. It's, 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 Looper is a great movie, but it's muted. So I'm just like lip reading. Learning to lip read via movies is fantastic. <sighs> Basically what I'm saying is with the stock pads and these headphones, I don't think I'd, I'd use them. They just oof, they are just oof. They oof the shit out of my oof. They hurt, they're sharp. They are old school dynamic. So how do these pads fix the situation? Well, uh, the Midnights, which are the, the U's. I don't have to explain it multiple times. It's been like three days again. Warm and boomy, soft with more comfort. No recommendation though, because I think the mids are just like, they just, the Midnights are not, they just don't. They just haven't so far. However, the jerseys, which are the fabric ones again, are getting a base, F, which is like, like to do a lot of bass, adds aggression, which I, you know, doesn't sound like you want that on a sharp headphone. But then I wrote fun question mark because it was one of those, like it went so far into the, like the, the range of absurdity that I was like, do I like this? Am I enjoying being beaten? It's like when you get with a dominatrix and you don't know she's a dominatrix and you're like, oh, where's this blood from? I'm having a good time. Um, plus detail which is hard to imagine on T1s, like more detail than the stock pads, but that's the result of it being narrower. So it takes me about eight, nine songs to figure out what each pad is doing. And so I was going as I go. So the first thing was like, holy fuck the bass. Man, these are aggressive. Are they fun? 
Then I went back to the stock pads and went, oh, these are so much narrower than the stock pads. Sounding, not just width. And then I realized that it's a narrowing of the sound stage. It's causing the detail to be closer. I did give those a recommendation, although I'm gonna give it like a half recommendation. Because now that I've been through the rest of the line, I know what it's capable of. I didn't, I can't go back and I could erase it, I guess, but. Um, the Elite Sheepskin are hollow, sharp, exclamation point, boomy, more bass, nope. These Elite Sheepskins are just not, I mean, they're beautiful pads. And you would be like, what, Pazios? Didn't the mids get like, like they were okay, but they were more competent than, than, than the, aren't the, uh, the, the Elite Chose Choice Leather? <clears throat> no, never the Elite Sheepskin. I have to go through and figure out exactly if they've even, like, those are definitely different foams, but it's amazing the difference pads can make. It's like, I'm being shocked by this. Fucking no on the Elite Sheepskin. If you own Elite Sheepskin and you're trying many T1s, you're a sadist. On to some recommended ones. Recommended ones. We go now. The Elite Velours. Um, they're getting a double plus recommendation. Plus comfort, obviously. The first word I put down was smooth. Negative treble. So not like, when I say treble, it's just like, ooh. It's a little bit less ooh, and I'm, I'm glad with less ooh, because it's too much ooh. Plus width, plus warmth. If you want more comfortable, wider, warmer, smoother sounding pads, Elite Velour, I just threw that on the ground. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a full recommendation for those. Then a single recommendation plus for the hybrids, because I came off with a double recommendation, went to the hybrids and went deep bass, because they're a little bit more closed in, so they captured a little bit more, but then they were still sharp, so it like V-shaped it. I wrote the word aggressive, warm, narrow. So if, I, that's why it's only getting one recommendation, because I mean, everything that gets a recommendation is like at least as good or better than stock. So stock, I don't like. I don't like the stock. I don't like the stock on these. I don't like the headphones by themselves by default. It's, it's not the greatest experience. So having this one be uh, aggressive, warm, and narrow, and still get a recommendation is a good sign. Or a bad sign if you like these default. Um, moving on to the Alice Elite, yeah, Elite Fenestrated, which is the holy one, which is basically the holy grail because all three headphones so far have gotten double pluses with the Elite Fenestrated. So I'm starting to see a pattern. We'll see if it continues for those three. Um, plus width, plus soundstage. Ooh yeah, still aggressive. How to, I don't know how to, else to put that. Like it just, it, it just sounds, oh, somehow having these pads with, with holes in it sounds more open and wider than having like literally breathable velour. I don't get it. This is why Deco I'm glad Deconi asked me to do this because I, I've swapped pads before it's like just because for a comfort thing or maybe there's something really wrong with the headphone. Like these headphones over here, I've never had really anything wrong. This headphone, I have something wrong with it. So the fact that the Elite Fenestrated can literally change it to a headphone that I would actually enjoy is amazing. So yeah, more width, more soundstage. Literally wrote, ooh yeah. Don't know what song was playing when that happened, but I wrote, ooh yeah, on the paperwork. So that should explain it. And then I wrote a negative. I did put a negative still aggressive. So I guess that would still be the recommendation if you like your T1s and the way they sound, but you just want to try something different without like completely changing the headphone. Elite Fenestrated. Then we went on to the Choice Leather. Now the Choice Leather is my choice for several headphones we have on the table. In fact, they got a double recommendation for the DT770s, a double recommendation for the DT1990s, and no fucking recommendation for these. Holy shit, stop. No, 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 boomy, ugh, oh, plus, plus bass, absolutely unlistenable. Like I literally was like, oh, this is funny. Like as soon as I put them on, one song was like, oh, these are okay, next. No, then like a vocal track came on and I was like, oh, is this okay? Oh no, and then I just, just no. So I mean, that's just, do not get the choice leathers for the T1s, stop. Double recommendation for both of those. Fuck no for, for these, no. And then to the Choice Suede, which on the 17s, 770s was stuffy and boomy and blah, blah, blah. Then there was smooth and bang and bass and wide and intense. And now on these, which is the ones I have on there currently, and I was so close 
to giving it my first triple plus recommendation, but I held back because it does do something w negative. But uh, the first word I wrote for the uh, choice suede is epic. They just sound epic. What does that mean? Well, I mean, I could probably write like 17 words to describe that is, but that would be with soundstage, uh, clarity, bass, like just like, like, whoa, like this, like music in this space is like, oh my God, it's epic. Like that's, that's the sort of shit that's happening with these pads. Um, negative pain. You know, sometimes I put a plus and sometimes I put a negative. And the negative here is pain. There's no, there's less pain. I'll take any headphone pad that gives me less pain. And that's almost why I gave it the triple star. But uh, bass boost, we uh, as known, it's gonna have more bass. It's not like taking over, but it's definitely like it's there. I wrote dam, like D A M N, not like a like a river dam, like a dam. Like I wrote dam at some point, and then I went back and I wrote plus flaws because I found a track. I'm skipping through tracks, and I'm like, wait, is that a fucking? Is that like? It must have been an MP3 or a very, very poorly recorded or encoded song. And I could hear like the crunchiness of it. And then I switched back to the stock pads and everything sort of settled down. I went a little bit more neutral and I couldn't hear those flaws. And then I put it back to this and it was like, like, oh God. So the reason I can't triple plus these is because when you have bad music, you're gonna fucking know about it. So, other than that, these are the winners. Or like, there's literally three pads here that you could get for T1s that are a double plus. The Elite Velours, the Elite Fenestrated, and the Choice Suede's. So yeah, there you go. That was a fun one. Cause that's the only one on this table. I own these three, so I know I love those. I haven't heard these in a while. I know I love these, haven't heard these in a, These were like the only ones I think were gonna come around that are like, they needed a pad swap. They need it. These, well, this one needed a pad swap, but these, like, I love the rest of these. So you, you got, you got aggressive sh tendencies. So now I'm moving on. Do the tigers tomorrow or the next day. Oh God, I just wanna, I just wanna take a nap now. I'll be back. Y'all gonna have to bear with me because I apparently lost this section when I recorded it live. So we're gonna go back and hopefully my notes are solid because this is the Tiger 300Rs with the pad swap. So, according to um, what I wrote down, the Midnight's, solid Midnight pads, were louder, closer, with firm bass, almost to the point of shaking the headphones. But then they were, the, the overall was just shouty and meh. When I write meh, I pretty much don't give it a recommendation. So the, the Midnight pads are no, are no on this. By the way, these are probably, one of my favorite headphones that Bear Dynamic has. And on the on the table that we, we were just on this table, it's no longer that table, it's something else now. But um, I'm not crazy. Uh, so basically, I look at it this way. I love these headphones. At any time I do a pad swap, it's an affront to my love. So uh, if I give you some recommendations, it's, it's only one two-star recommendation on the Tigers or two plus recommendation, which by the way, in the description, I will put all the pluses to the pads. Hi. Um, the jerseys, the cloth ones. Reverb, meh. Just added reverb. Moving on. The Elite Sheepskin. Pounding, aggressive, crowded. Did not like the Elite Sheepskin on these tigers. It was, it was no good. You're so confused as to what's going on right now. Uh-huh. Um, the Elite Velours. I'm giving a recommendation to the Elite Velours because, here we go, softer, groovier. Um, what the fuck did I write there? Something rear, clear, seal rear, st, l, spectacular, wait, spectacular, wide plus bass. No, that's not spectacular. So we're adding width, we're softening it, we're adding a little bit of bass boost, and apparently we're adding more groove. Still clear, that's what that says. I have terrible handwriting, I should have had a doctor. So it's still clear, yet has added bass, so it's a little bit of a, of a, of a twist. I guess groovier would mean it's more for like funk. It's like a funk setting. But I did give it a, a one star recommendation for the Velours. The Elite Hybrids, 
um, increased bass impact, closer sounding, which, you know, soundstage is fine, but if you can bring it in and you'll, you'll get these things. So I'm adding a plus to this with more intimate sound. So the 300 R's baby, have you seen these? Have you seen my 300 R's? Do you want a more intimate sound with the 300 R's? Then you need to go with the Elite Hybrids for a little bit more bass impact, which is due to it being closer. And that is also due to it being more intimate. It's really easy to decipher this shit. Um, the Elite Fenestrated, are you ready? Two stars, baby. Two star recommendation for the Elite Fenestrated because they made it, oh, I remember this now because I'm doing this off of the pad, but I remember writing the word light here. It made the sound lighter. Like it, it took some weight off of your ears and I'm not talking about in comfort, I'm talking about an actual light added coherence. This is not where you belong. This is, this is a bad kitty, it's a bad kitty, go here. Plus coherent, plus better bass. Yeah, the Elite Fenestrated are just like a fucking, a force to behold. On all but the last two Elite Fenestrated, I'll get double star, double, you, uh, spoilers, you're not there yet. You're not there yet. You can't read this. We're, the, the editing of the video is preventing you from, this is a fucking future for you. Um, so yeah, light sounding with coherence and better bass. Elite Fenestrated is definitely a, a recommendation. Um, a choice leather. Great for the MMX 300s. It sounds trapped, hollow, and vibes ew. Ew vibes on the choice leather for the Tigers. So that's just another ew. So they're out. And the choice suede. This is fine. The choice suede is getting a recommendation. However, you have to understand it sounds heavy, loud, intense, and warm. So, I mean, if you want to change your tigers, which are really not, they're intense. I would say that the tigers are slightly intense, but they're certainly not warm. So if you want to add some heavy, loud warmth, you can go with the choice suede's. But I prefer the light, cohesive, and better base of the fenestrated, right? All right, we're moving on to the next one, which is this one, which I've already done in the past and the future. And I'll try not to lose my multiple segments of video. I just, uh, fuck, okay, moving on. Ah, don't fall down. Okay, so <clears throat> my pair of MMX 300s, upgrade. So, I've had these for, what, a year now? And I put the choice leathers on them a long time ago when Ducone was sending me like the sampler stuff. And so sitting down for this test, I didn't have the original pads. So I put on an all call on my uh, patronage chat, the $10 patronage chat, because I know people have this headphone. And I'm like, which one of these bare dynamic pads looks like the pad from that? Because the ones in the T1 are a solid foam backing and this one's a perforated foam backing as you can see. And they all said this, and I find it hard to believe that this is like the original pads. So I took these off the Tigers. These are the Tiger pads. Now the Tiger pads are the same pads that are on the MMX 300s by default. Oof, because I actually, for the first time wrote down, because I, I didn't like play with these with the choice leather until it was time to review them in the order I've been doing it. So I took the stock pads from the Tigers, put them on this, and I wrote down sharp and narrow, because from what I know of these MMX 300s, and I fucking love these, I even gave them like the, are the only thing equivalent to like Mod House Argons that you can get without waiting 12 weeks for Orion to literally meticulously, you know, mod and hand you one. Uh, I'm T50 Mar Argons, not T60 Argons. Um, it was like, oh God. So this is one of those pairs of headphones. Like a couple, I should have gone over this previously, but you could use, so far, these four headphones, the Tigers, the T1s, those, and those, with their stock pads and not, I wouldn't be upset. However, well, I would be a little bit upset about the T1s. However, if that's what I remember the stock pads being like, because I think I used them for like a week before I swapped them out. We got some things to talk about. Um, this might be the first one that has the full cloth covering too. I don't remember. No, it's a little different on the Tigers. But uh, okay, so here we go. Am I cat or a ghost? Anyway, vertical 65 inch showing me all the 
beautiful foobars there. We have got the first recommendation for the Midnights. It's been five headphones, but finally the Midnights, which are the cheaper closed pad, actually perform well. In fact, all these pads are slightly different than you'd expect but based on the previous five fucking headphones. This is the second set of clothes back though, but uh, there's a lot of weird shit going on. I don't know how Bear Dynamic does this or what these Dakoni guys are doing. I don't know how anybody could even make this argument. If you ever need to show people the difference between pads, this is the headphone for it. Um, so the Midnights, the Calm. We have to putting the stock ones back on or a close proximity to stock. I thought that the, these uh, Midnights sounded calm less shouty, and I wrote bloopy bass, and then wider. So basically everything makes them sound wider than the stock pads. I should point it out, except for one, which is the very last one is the Choice Suede's, but most of them make them sound a little bit wider, so I didn't even bother penning that in. Bloopy bass was sort of like, like it was there, and it wasn't boomy, it was just, like, I didn't, I gave it a recommendation. It gets a recommendation with the Midnight Pads for bloopy bass. If you don't know what that means, Good, because I wrote it down like an hour ago, and I don't remember what it means, but I, I still liked it. So a recommendation for the Midnights. The jerseys. I'm losing my mind. I, I keep I see my shadow there. I think it's Chewbacca. The jerseys. They get a recommendation. Uh, plus on comfort, because automatically from this to the jerseys is more comfortable. Slightly less treble. Just slightly. And since these are sharp by default, it was like, oh yeah, it's a little, you know, a little less treble is good. Um, and a bit more bass. So it's just, just a slight adjustment of the scaling. And I feel like I should have wrote down like if it sounded more open, because a lot of fabric ones will, will do that. But they get a recommendation. So the Midnights and the Jerseys, which are the cheap ones, do get recommended. I'm thinking of being haunted. Um, what? Oh, oh, oh! The very first two star recommendation for the Elite Sheepskin. In fact, this is the first recommendation for the Elite Sheepskin. The good ones, like, oh, the big fuck pookie pookie. Oh, double star recommendation. Wider, softer, clear with solid lows. And that's what I expect. That's what I remember of these when I put on the Choice Leathers is they were just wider and softer and clearer with solid low end. And I'm like, wow, why don't the Elite Sheepskins work on anything else? But they work on this. So bravo, about fucking time. However, the Elite Velours, these guys, no. Like the one of the biggest no's on this sheet of paper because they are literally, the first word I, word I wrote, I always write the first word that comes to mind, was missing. Just missing. Missing in action, missing the seasoning, missing, just missing. Then I wrote out of phase, like I had to check my wiring because that's how fucking bad it sounded. And then I wrote um, bass mutes slash ew. So I put on, I was shuffling through music. I, just, I basically just put a pad and just put 20 songs on. And I put on a song that I know, it was like the Rocket League song, and I know it has hard hitting, boom, boom, bass. And every time the bass hit, the rest of the frequency response disappeared. Like, it, it, like, like what is happening? I, and I put back the normal pads and then went back to make sure it wasn't some sort of electrical issue. Like that's how fucked up the pads are. The Elite Sheepskins work, Elite Velours totally don't work. They, if you wanted to have someone think their headphones are broken, you buy them. The Elite Floors for the MMX 300s work great everywhere else. Plus, plus, double plus, plus. No, fucking no. Um, Elite Hybrids. This is the other two stars, three two star ratings. The Elite Hybrids, which have been a pretty good shower in this fucking competition. Reco, Reco, double Reco, Reco, double Reco. Softer, light, neutral. Here's, here's an interesting little thing. Mastering? So I gave these a double recommendation. Because they didn't make the headphone more fun, they certainly made it more tolerable, but then I started like, like I think I listened to the Elite Hybrids more on these than I did anything else. Because I couldn't figure, okay, so softer, that was the first thing, but obviously it's too sharp. 
Then I went light, like light, like lightweight, like it's picked the sound up and moved it like further back. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And then I went neutral, because I'm like, wait, what's the sound signature now? And then it took me a while to figure out, oh shit, you can now do actual DT1990 Neumann NDH20 um, Mackie 450 style mixing and mastering on these. If you get the Elite Hybrids. So, I mean, that's, if you have this as a gaming headset and you, you pick one of the mods that I have here that makes it more fun, that's great. But if you want to actually do like actual professional work or listening, like where it's just like level, like that's fucking level, fuck, Elite Hybrids. And you've automatically got a second pair of monitoring headphones, like good monitoring headphones, mastering headphones even. And then we go to the Elite Fenestrated, which has been... Double plus reco, double plus reco, double plus reco, double plus reco, don't even try it. The MMX 300s, folks, not just every other headphone with a different badge. Bass light, weird, narrow plus wide. So bass light automatically is like, ugh. But then weird, narrow plus wide, I could not tell if the sound stage had gotten narrower or wider. Because things, things would start happening, and I'd be like, oh God, it's so close. And then things would happen out there, and I'd be like, like holy fuck, it's so far away. I, I, I don't have to explain it, because I'm not recommending it. But yeah, no, fuck that. And then hard vocal tones. It sounded like there was a hump in like the upper vocal treble range. Just a hump there. I, I can't describe it. it was, that's, that may be the worst pad I don't know, the Elite Velours versus the Elite Fenestrator for the worst pads in these is an actual competition. Like, it, it hurt. It, it hurt to try to write words that explained how bad the Elite Fenestrator were on these. And the Elite Fenestrated are great on everything else. But moving off that, because we now have another double recommendation for the Choice Leather, which are the original pads that I have on. There's my pair over there that are like a year old and broken in. And I put the new ones on there to make sure it wasn't just because those were broken in. Wide, fun, smooth, Spitfire, more than SS. Okay, so, wide, you understand that. Fun, I don't understand how to describe things that are fun other than saying this shit's fun. And then I wrote smooth, and I just, it just you, you don't have to understand anything else. Wide, fun, smooth, smooth means not sharp, mar so smooth. And then I wrote Spitfire because Prodigy Spitfire came on. And when Prodigy Spitfire came on, I went, this is the song. This is the reason I love these headphones. These headphones that I own with those pads is Prodigy Spitfire. So if you get these headphones or own these headphones and you get the choice leather pads, put on Prodigy Spitfire and you'll understand. And then like I was singing to it and Chewbacca came running over because she didn't understand me just yelling the lyrics from Prodigy. And, and yeah, and then more than SS. So the SS uh, sheepskins, I gave a double star review, double star rating, like absolutely. The choice leather or everything that the elite sheepskins add, but more. And I'm gonna leave that as both being a choice. It isn't like there's a clear winner here because the choice leather are basically more V-shaped, more fun, more bass, more. But if you still want what I described, and this is why I did the elite sheepskins in order. I didn't like go back and forth. Wider, softer, clear with solid lows. That's a good, base for a headphone for me to enjoy if you want more of that like how much do you want to smoke pot or do you want to smoke pot with a little bit of angel dust on it then you get the choice leather which is the way i prefer to not smoke pot but use these headphones i am the choice leather guy so i think they're still going to be my choice although the new like i have we're done. Choice Leather is still the one to fucking go with as far as I'm concerned on this. But if you want a little bit toned down from the Choice Leather, if you think that's a little bit too much of a thing, if you just want to be like, you know, make it better, Zeos. Give me a double star, but not like your preference. Elite Sheepskin. Choice Suede. I gave this a recommendation. And it was a hard one because it did a lot different to the sound than all these other ones were doing. Like when I'm but just like where this headphone can become apparently neutral as fuck and good for mastering, 
Um, it could also be a gaming headphone. Did you not understand how this could be a gaming headphone? So with the stock pads, it's very sharp. And sometimes gamers are like, oh, I love, you know, just footsteps and explosions and whizzes, but no, no bass, no bass. So I have to keep changing that or my wallpaper, my uh, screensaver will start and it's definitely not safe for it. Um, so literally the words for the choice suede are extra. I started with the word extra, which makes me feel like a little bit of a, of a um, millennial. But like, dude, that's so extra. It sounded so extra. Like it was like, oh my God. Coming off of that, which is like super wide and out there, narrow, silky gaming treble. Silky treble, silky treble. So, you know, the fact that it's a big suede thing, Silks is treble. But oh my God, did it get fucking narrow sounding. And it took me a minute of, of playing and shuffling through. And then I put on that, um, I have it somewhere buried in that folder, the actual audio from Squad, which is one of my favorite games as far as audio goes. And I went, holy shit, this, this, is a, this is for the gamer, the hardcore gamer. If you own these already and you're hardcore gaming, choice suede. So you can get the choice leathers and the choice suede, which are, you know, choice leather, choice suede. And this could be, holy shit, fun gaming. I'm having a fucking fun time. And then you put this one on and it's like, holy God. The sound is being pressed into my temples and I can hear everything. And it's specifically, like, I don't know if I've listened to music all day with it, but for narrow and slightly narrower, silky treble, I just wrote gaming. Like, there was, there was no other choice. There's no other choice. This, this makes it the gaming headphone of the year. So... <laughs> You, you have so many layers and levels. I think I spent the most time talking about this one um, from all of them. The next headphone I do is the 880s, but just a quick run back over in case you've missed it. I'll hold my book up so that you could clearly see the important stuff. Um, I think they're, by default, they're sharp and narrow. Um, you can get, you have one, two, three, four, six pads. This might be the one with the most pad recommendations. No, no, the DT-1990s worked with six. This one worked with four, yeah. Um, you could either get the Midnights for calm, less shouty, or the Jerseys for comfort, less treble, bit more bass, or the, the three important ones are the Sheepskin, the Hybrid, and the Fenestrated. No, I'm sorry, not the Fenestrated. Although it is important you not buy that. The Sheepskin, the Hybrid, and the Choice Leather. Choice leather is all the way turned up to fucking 11 fun. Uh, lead hybrid is literally neutral, like neutral headphone. And then elite sheepskin is turned up to 9.3 sip tea for that. And then the other ones, the single re recommendations are either the, if you don't have a big budget, the midnight and the jerseys do an amazing job of just fixing what I think is up with that. And then the choice suede is just, like, I wouldn't choice suede at first unless you know you want to game in it. But there you go. So now, these are done, these are done, these are done, these are done. It's time for the 880s. Probably do that tomorrow or the day after. All right, that's just the way it is. Before there's another sneezing fit, which causes me to stop this list and do it again, let me go over the DT880 600 ohm. The stock pads on these, I found, because I had a slight headache this morning, is not the most pleasant thing to listen to. Like, there are, by all means, godlike headphones. I've said that in the review. But, like, if you're just, like, if you can't handle it at that exact moment, the stock pads can be a little much. And I want to thank uh, Deconi for sponsoring this video once again. This will be the last chapter of it. And causing me to go through this and finding, basically, the new Keeper pads. So... The midnight pads, which are the solid backed ones, more impact, subdued vocals, and softer sound, which should be a recommendation. I should put a plus here, but I'm not going to because there's other headphones down the line that do it better. So midnights, I don't think any of these pads sounded bad. It's probably the first headphone. I could almost recommend all of them, but uh, some of them were like the creeping death. I couldn't couldn't quite get it. So the jerseys, the cloth ones, were boring and soft, yet addictive. So I ended up not changing the tracks. I just put on music and I was just like, the whole, the whole four or five songs in a row, I'm like, yeah, this, is, this takes away a little bit of the excitement of it, but 
I could just listen to this for hours. So if you have 880s and you want to just try to like subdue them a bit and just like l turn them into almost like not a generic sound, but a less intense sound, absolutely with the jerseys. Only a single star rating on that though. The Elite Sheepskin, uh, another solid one. More kick, better imaging, and a softer sound. So that's like what this was doing, but like the higher end version, which is why the Sheepskins get a plus one. Uh, so you could, you could look into those. The first two star is the Elite Velours with an airy sound. So you put them on and it was sort of like you could breathe again because the stock pads are a little bit open. So they're a little bit, a little bit more back towards stock and open and bigness and open the back channels up. Increased bass kick, uh, detailed yet heavy. So it's it's like I guess it would I guess you would call that a little bit closer. I didn't write an hour down there, but usually when you when the detail goes up is when it gets closer to your face. Yet I said sweet. Literally the word sweet is written here under the elite velour. And if you can make DT eight eight DT eight eighty six hundred ohms sweet, I'm gonna put fucking two stars next to it. What does sweet mean? I don't know. What is salty? None of these are salty. But, but I give them a double star rating. If you have Elite Velours, you want to try a different set of headphone pads on these, go for it. Uh, the Elite Hybrids. Focused, narrower, bass heavy. So that one I specifically said narrower. And focused basically just means just brings everything into a ball. And bass heavy. I gave that a one star recommendation because I there are some bass heads out there who are just going to be like, but Zeos, what's got the most bass? And it's real close to that. If I wrote bass heavy, it's that, that means a thing. However, the Elite Fenestrated has bass, mm. so maybe it's not bass heavy, but it definitely just gives it a little bit more, a little bit more in the, in the, in the down here. It's like, mm, yes. Clear, what the hell did I write there? Stanos? Sharp? Sharp. It's clear or sharp. Okay, okay, I got this. I'm deciphering my own writing. Elite Fenestrated. Base, mm, clear slash sharp. So that's sort of like an original sound. That's not changing too much. And then I wrote, how is every pad good? Like, how is every pad I fry this good? Because even the ones that I'm not recommending are still like, they don't make it terrible. And I may have spoken too soon because we're going to move into the next pad. But... Yeah, I gave another plus recommendation for the Elite Fenestrated, which is the one that's worked on mostly, basically all of these. Not a double star, though. It didn't improve it to the point where I'm like, oh my god, you have to have this. But fix, adding a little more bass, keeping the highs, sort of like a V-shape. It just sort of V-shaped the Fenestrated. Absolutely fine with that. And now the Choice Leather. These, the ones that I have on my like, MMX. Um, I did not give those a recommendation. I wrote too much. That's literally the first thing I wrote. I put them on my head and went, oh God, this is too much. This is too much. Then I wrote so loud. Oh my God, this is too much and it's so loud. But the Zeos just turned it down. No, no, that's not how this works. You leave it alone and you just keep changing. And then I wrote four characters here that's probably gonna make some of you wanna buy them and, and use the choice leather. I wrote LCD4. It reminded me a lot of what I experienced with the LCD4, which was too much. Too much of a good thing. Too much sound. Too much fucking detail. Too it just it was it was it was it was it was it was like oh god next track next track can I get the next track just just next track next track next track. I was trying to trying to breathe through this, the actual impact of sound, and that might be someone's fetish. By all means, go buy the choice leathers, but I am not giving those a recommendation for me. It's not it's not what I'm looking for. And then finally. And I'm tempted to give these a three star, not just a two star. But I haven't given anything else a three star, so I'm just going to go with two star. The choice suede's, the ones that are on here. In fact, the ones that I'm going to probably mount to this now. I could just put, just put them on there here. Because this is going to be more like a permanent installation than like a test. Because the word I wrote first, after I put the choice suede's on, was rich, like rich milk chocolate. Like a rich, creamy, fucking che velvety cheese. So, if I can make 880s sound rich, fucking sign me up. S 
rich sound slash bass with three S's. Again, I'm talking to myself in riddles here, but these are not bass heavy headphones by default. They're pretty bass light, come to, come to think of it actually. So if I could throw these on and then, yeah, that's not gonna have the bass I'm looking for. That's gonna have the bass I'm looking for. Yes. Oh yeah, oh yeah, just oh yeah, they oh yeah. Um, and then the most important thing is I wrote Argon Imaging. So if you know anything about me and the love of the Modhouse Argons, you know that they are almost impossible to find headphones that are so well versed at just imaging, just, just, just the spread of sound. And with these pads, I'm pretty sure we're getting close to it. Maybe not T60 Argons. T50 Argons though, ooh. The staging is just like perfect. They're, they're definitely have a more heavy bass sound. It just sat, <clears throat> if you can convert headphones that I would normally not wear for like four hours in a row into headphones I'd wear four hours in a row, fucking two stars. And that's what these choice suede's give the 880, 600 ohms. So these are pretty much my choice. Your other option is to go airy, bass kick, sweet, detailed, heavy. So basically, oh God, no, 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 no. Basically the elite velours. Yeah, 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 anime girl with feet. Basically, the Elite Velours are the only other one I recommend. And they're a similar sound because they're, you know, we're talking about suede and velour. But I'm going to, the fact that this is a two star and this is a two star and they're both doing pretty much the same thing, these are just doing it better. They're just doing it better. I should knock that down, but I'm not going to. So that was it. And that was my screensaver starting. You know you can't have that picture because it's one of 6,000 images in that weird nine by 16 phone wallpaper folder I have. So uh, I guess my finishing thoughts are not gonna be specifically about any headphone, but about all the headphones I have here. Bear Dynamic makes a very strange lineup because they all look very similar, like like, in the dark, you'd have probably a hard time picking them apart. I don't think you could tell the Tigers from the 880s, from the T1s, to the DT, you're just like feeling them around, maybe you'll be able to tell from the textures in the back of them. But, my God, do they react just completely and wholly differently, depending on the pads you put on them. And this is why it bothers me when people spend thousands of dollars on cables and power conditioners and fucking this and that. All these stupid audiophile things for their headphones or speakers. Well, speakers is a little bit harder to quantify because room is the biggest part about speakers sounding good. But if I can just get a bunch of pads from the same company, all designed for the same series of headphones, all these are just bare dynamic headphones for bare dynamics, all these, well, all these and those. Bare dynamics fucking headphones. And I can show this much difference that means that it's up to Bear Dynamic or every headphone company, and I've complained about this before, to literally sit down and say, okay, is this pad the final tuning solution we want? Because like the ESS 422H, I've mentioned them, they're not for sale anymore, were god awful until you changed out to the 1540 short pads and they were perfect, great, fucking great. There's been so many headphones in the past that have just been eh, until you got a good pad on them. Even my Ether C flows, I have a Yaxi AKG pad taped to it because that's the that's the pad. That is the pad. So I don't blame Bear Dynamic for putting out headphones. That the, these are the sounds that they chose. You have other options though, and if you end up becoming a person who collects more than like five headphones, you might be the kind of person who should collect more than five sets of pads for those headphones. Just something you could throw around. I mean, this is, a, this is an investment. None of these are fucking cheap. Even the cheap ones are still like $40 a set. But, you know, you're getting sheepskin and stuff melded around custom memory foam. Yeah, the company's going to charge you for it. But you can turn literally any one headphone that you spent, you know, $1,000 on into two headphones or three headphones, depending on how insane the pad change is. So what I guess this video taught us is, yes, you can fix some issues with some Bear Dynamic headphones. 
Uh, I don't think any of these really deserve like a full repair. None of these are broken headphones. I like all these fucking headphones. I really like a lot of these. Like there's six of them here and I would recommend every single one of them. But if, you know, on certain days when you're just like, you know, I'm, I'm bored with this, this headphone that I bought. I wish it wasn't this headphone. I wish it was something else. Instead of spending $300 on the next headphone, you might want to invest, you know, 60 bucks on a set of choice sways or 70. I forgot how much they cost. I think there'll be a coupon code in the description of this video for those of you who are actually interested in buying this. They're, they're on Amazon, but they should also be on Dakoni.com with a coupon code, but there'll be slower shipping and things like that. Um, so yeah, thanks to Dakoni for putting me through this hell. It's been literally four weeks. I've had this table here. Look what I've done to my floor because of the, the, the wheels on my chair just ruined my floor. Thanks to Connie, you ruined my floor. That $500 won't even cover that. Um, obviously, these are going back to the company. I'm going to keep all of these. Come to me now. Come to me. Well, you could stay over there, but you all come to me, yes. And I'm going to try these on some other things, and we'll see how they make them feel on the inside. Because there are a couple Baronamic headphones that are not here, not present at the moment. Amron Holmes, things like that. I'm wondering if the Amaran Holmes, because I had a couple issues where they sounded, if I would have sat down with these eight and just pecked at it, if I would have been able to turn those into perfect headphones. I know I've certainly turned like the 880s into what I thought was, if I just don't want to hear the actual voice of God in detail, but I want to have a little more fun with it. So yeah, uh, buy pads, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm not, I know Dakoni sponsors this video and I'm gonna recommend their pads highly for this thing, but any pads, even take them off of headphones you already own and try them on something else. Just to see how big the change is. Go for it, experiment. Like Shredder said, go, play, have fun. That's a deep cut. All right, I'm done with this. Links to, well, I guess I'm gonna have, I'm trying to think of how I'm doing the description of this video. I could just have all the pads and then have next to the pad which headphone it works well with or each individual headphone will be linked and then under it the pad with the rating so i'll probably do that so go enjoy this i hope you can experiment and try these things like on your own because it's really hard for me to like write down actual words and somehow get that to translate to oh by the way i really enjoyed this you know 8.47 percent more than the previous pad so oh uh sponsor this video is great but I could still use your support on Subscribestar or Patreon since I do have a mortgage now and it's not going away for a long time. So Subscribestar and Patreon are linked in the description or a pinned comment. You get to see these videos early. You get to participate in the yard sales and you get to ask me any questions you want on platform. Uh, if you want your questions answered immediately and not like three weeks later because I'm so far fucking behind, I'm so sorry everyone, I'm so sorry. Feel free to join the $10 tiers on either one of those support formats to get into the private behind the scenes Telegram chat where you can access, um, well, anything you want. Like me, personally. Personally, I don't want as many private messages, but you at me in the patronage chat, you're a paying patron, boom, here's your answer. Here's your answer. Hey Zios, what's your thing? Here's your answer. So if you want that sort of access to me on the phone, 10 bucks a month. Um, <clears throat> I think I'm done for the day. Uh, don't forget to check out Hi-Fi Guides and the Hi-Fi Guide forums. I'm sure there'll be a whole discussion thread. I've tried to make like a pad discussion thread, but all these things that I'm finding are also very much like my hearing, hearing these things. So you may find it differs slightly, but if you've watched these reviews in the past, you've liked my, re my recommendations, it'll probably work out. It's, it's not that different. And you know, the only thing that'll change is amplifiers and DACs and source material. So good luck. Everyone, you happy? I'm happy. I'm glad this is so over. Oh my God, I'm so glad this is over. This is like homework. This is like the big, like my dissertation is like, hey, write this paper. This is the most paperwork I've filled out since I bought the house. Um, and yeah, and that wallpaper in the description, feel free to, it's down there with the, with the Ruby one that we did with the beginning when it was horizontal, but we're moving on with our lives because vertical displays are the best. And uh, thanks to Coney. <sighs> I gotta go now.